Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to March Office Hours. This is Travis Bethel. Uh, I want to let everybody know we're recording this session as usual, and it'll be on our HI training webpage in the near future. And uh, any questions along the way, we have the chat function, or if folks just want to unmute themselves, we can do that as well. So I want to thank you all again for attending today, and we'll get started. So we're gonna go through some uh, preliminary health home designation uh, review materials. Um, got some feedback I wanna share with the group. Touch on policy procedure, COVID-19, OMH updates, um, quality notebook, consent updates, and then NetSmart. So that will be our round out for today. I wanna let folks know we, we got our uh, designation review. Um, we haven't got the formal uh, results back yet, but I wanna give folks uh, just a glimpse of some of the information that we did get. Uh, overall, the feedback was very positive for both the adult and children's program for the whole network. So I, I wanted to thank everybody for all that excellent work. Um, you know, the, the samples that were polled, the, the charts that were looked at um, went over pretty well. and. Uh, Network, we had our performance measures that the state looks at for health homes across the state or, um, for their particular regions that they look at. And we met 12 out of 18 measures um, for the adult program in our region, which is about 67%. And then we also had 67% of our home and community-based eligibility assessments completed network-wide, which was pretty strong as well. Our children's program had eight out of eight measures that we uh, <clears throat> measured against through the network, which is 100%. That is the first time um, we were reported by the state that that's happened in New York State. So kudos and hats off to all of our children's providers as well for that um, unprecedented goal achieved. Uh, so we have uh, high standards to meet there moving forward. 100% can't get much higher. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And, and wanted to share that news with folks um, as we were getting information. Um, we had 50 charts polled um, on the adult side of the house and 34 polled on the children's side throughout the network. And those chart reviews wrapped up uh, as of last Friday. So we should be getting our final results as far as redesignation um, goes and what our trends were, et cetera. But I wanted to give you those high level updates um, initially and uh, some other things that they brought up when it came to both programs, just looking through charts, plans of care, they were mostly completed on time for the charts that they pulled. Uh, goals were generally person-centered and realistic. Uh, many of the case notes were very thorough and comprehensive, and there was a lot of positive feedback around those last two bullets that I mentioned, the goals and um, case notes. Um, they just really, the, the, the auditors really took time to say how much they were impressed about the golden thread is how they had termed it, um, you know, was so consistent throughout the network with the quality of the notes and the, the goals and the plans. So um, thank you all again for, for that great work. It's clearly showing, um, you know, there's always room for us to, to improve. It's always, it's always about moving forward, but you know, these, these are areas that are uh, big impacts in how we do our work. So, um, you know, transitions of care was another area there was a lot of uh, great teamwork meeting with uh, different providers and transition folks to and from health home program, um, whatever the circumstances were. And, and in many instances, there were increased person meetings that were occurring, um, which the auditors uh, mentioned was pretty significant considering the challenges around COVID over the last couple of years. Um, so they just wanted to duly note that the efforts that were put forth through our whole network were very much appreciated in, in trying to meet the needs of people out there within our communities. So a great big thank you with our stars of different colors uh, around you know, our preliminary feedback. Uh, you know, I think as a network, we're, we're a great team and, and we really appreciate as a health home, all the work that you all do each and every day, understanding that there's significant challenges along the way. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I didn't know if there's any thoughts or Anything anybody wanted to bring up around the redesignation? If there's any questions you had for us, just based on you know how things went um, beyond what I just mentioned, um, trend-wise, we we still have to wait for that report. There were a couple areas that they touched on, but they didn't really give us a lot of detail at the moment. So unfortunately, we don't have that. 
um, right now. Um, but hats off, I can't, I can't tell you, you know, the adult program did great. The children's program did great. And, and to, to hit all eight out of eight measures in the children's side is just, wow, it's, it's just fabulous. Great work, everybody. All right. Well, if there's nothing more there, I hope it's something to ride the wave for a while because, uh, you know, we've been up and down over the last couple of years with so much stuff going on out there. So it's great to hear some good news. So thank you all again. Uh, policy and procedures. We don't have any updates at this time for any new policies and procedures. I know Sarah had mentioned last month about um, us possibly taking the time to walk through a policy why we're on office hours for updates and we do intend on doing that moving forward. So I just wanted to you know, follow up on that suggestion, Sarah, thank you. Um, so we'll start incorporating those updates um, as, as we're, we're doing that. So there's a chance for folks to ask questions while that policy is up and in, in front on the deck. Um, so stay tuned for the comprehensive assessment updates that'll be coming next. And as always, website policy procedure page you know, that's going to have all our current uh, policies and procedures for you as a reference. Any questions around any policy procedure things uh, to the day? Okay. Well, if you do, you know where to reach out and we will get back to you. Uh, COVID, DOH, I sent this out to the network. I just wanted to bring some time on it today as well. Um, you know, basically the message we were given around the pandemic is CMS is in the process of pulling back the public health emergency. Um, the rumbling is out there that it could possibly happen by the end of April. Um, so Peggy Elmer, the state director for, for DOH for Health Home, um, has said, start now, get ready, get back to normal, quote unquote. Um, you know, especially around the uh, verbal consent piece. You know, we want to make sure that folks understand that DOH is saying verbal consent will end once the federal emergency ends and that, you know, should really be working towards that. Um, you know, we can still use verbal consent, but it should be a last resort and, and really ramping up to get those signatures as quickly as possible in those circumstances. And please document in the charts if there's challenges with that, because that's one of the things that we want to make sure we're tracking. Um, the electronic signature is something that we're being told is likely to stay after the emergency is pulled, but it's not in writing yet. So I don't want to say that it's in fact there after emergency, but we're being told that there's a strong indication that it will be. So I just want folks to know that as well. Um, anything specific to um, the DOH side of the house for, for verbal consent. And yeah, I, I understand it's going to bring some challenges still, but the message is, has been pretty clear. It's going to go away. Um, so, you know, I, I think in you know, those unique challenges that, that folks face, please reach out to us and, and we can try and uh, troubleshoot with you, talk through things and, and, you know, work through that particular instance. Um, but it's coming unless there's something that derails it. It's coming for sure in the next, month or so. No other questions or anything? Okay. How does that relate to OMH and Health Home Plus for adults? Um, so we did get uh, clarification again. It's come up a few times over the last half a dozen months or so. <clears throat> what does that mean for, for Health Home Plus, you know, face-to-face, -face, how we bill, et cetera? So I reached back out. Um, one of our providers reached out to me because they had um, – became aware of um, a message on a recent training. So they wanted to clarify. So I reached out to OMH and got this specific, it's almost verbatim here that I put on the deck um, that, you know, the flexibility is still in place for telehealth or audio contacts in lieu of face-to-face -face for Health and Plus, but there's gotta be a documented health and safety risk for not having that contact. So if you've, if you've done that, you've got the health and safety risk documented, um, you know, you can still bill at the health and plus rate as long as you've met all the other requirements. But once the public health emergency is pulled, those face-to-face -face requirements are going to go away. And, and OMH was pretty straight on that as well. It's, it's, it's going away. The two face-to-face -face visits are going to be required again once the public health emergency is pulled back. 
So that's not overly popular for folks out there. I'm well aware of that. Um, but that's the message we're receiving currently. And I think it's, again, it's going to be a situation where if you've got significant um, roadblock with that, with the certain people, you know, just we'll have to try and talk through that and work through that. Um, the other thing that OMH referenced was the August 4th memorandum, which I know we've shared a few times over the last half a dozen months. But this is the, the document that links to the infection control um, guide that you can use to, to assess for those risk safety factors related to a person not being able to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, you know, and, and, it, and it helps give a bunch of different examples of what that means. And, and again, it's driven because of the COVID um, response. So I didn't know if there's any questions or insight around this, but I just wanted to make sure folks got the most recent information on it um, because it will be coming to an end in the next month or so as well when the emergency waiver is pulled. Okay. Well, if I hear anything more on it or we hear anything more on it, we'll definitely get information out to folks. I'm going to turn over to Taylor now. Taylor's going to talk about our quality notebook. Taylor, you out there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so we are going to be introducing um, a quality notebook, and this is a little snapshot of what it's going to look like. We are going to start to roll these out um, in the next couple of weeks, first or second week of April. So when you guys receive your monthly reports, you'll also be receiving this quality notebook. So this page that you're looking at is going to be um, your monthly summary. So each month um, you'll have this overall view of the various items that were audited. So if you take a look at our, um, our policy, monthly we're auditing plan of care, comprehensive assessment, um, continuity of care, and the ability to serve Health Home Plus. Um, so you will see in your summary of findings column um, how many plans of care or comprehensive assessments you have overdue um, and how many, if any, of those are going to be on a corrective action plan. So those are going to be um, any plans or assessments that are over 90 days overdue. Um, so in that notes column there, you'll get a link and that will link you to a separate sheet within the workbook. Um, that will show you any and all of those plans or assessments that are going to be overdue along with a due date that is 30 days following um, the receipt of this workbook. Um, so when you get your workbook along the bottom, you'll see tabs for the various um, audits. So your initial plans of care, initial comps, um, amendments, and annual comp assessments. And then also within our policy, um, biannually, we're auditing um, eligibility assessments, consent and transition. So if it's one of those months when you're being audited for those, uh, that will also be listed there as well. And the same with the comprehensive chart audits. If it is a month where your CMA is being audited for that, that information will be there as well. Thank you, Taylor. I wanted to just mention too around in the notes section where it's talking about corrective action. Um, we're going to, as a health home, start to follow up a little bit more thoroughly on that. Um, we, we weren't as thorough um, in the past, uh, but I just want to let folks know if you have things that are significantly over those 90 days due dates, we will be following up further with this uh, particular organization on you know, next steps to make sure that that stuff gets taken care of. Um, and, and, and it's really so that we can be in compliance for billing, um, you know, a lot of the stuff's tied to it, such as the plan of care itself, you know, that's tied into MAP now. Um, if the initial plan of care is not in MAP within the required time frame, that it can impact billing. Um, and then, you know, so forth moving forward, you know, as far as uh, continuation of that plan being updated, uh, you know, so I just wanted to put that out there so folks have that awareness that, you know, we will be looking a little closer at those 90 day timelines and, and following up with with organizations. Yep, and folks will still um, be receiving their monthly reports. So you'll be getting, um, you know, those lists of folks that are coming due. Um, that way you can disperse those amongst your care managers and kind of stay on top of all those plans and um, assessments that are coming due as well. Is there any questions around the quality notebook or any anything around reports? 
And as you guys receive these, um, feel free to, you know, shoot any feedback or anything you'd like to see, any tweaks. Um, we'd be more than open to, to hearing that. All right. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Got it. All right. So uh, we have consent update coming down the pike here. Jessica Robertson sent out last week to the children's providers a training that's going to be coming through. It's actually tomorrow. Um, the next slide will touch on that as well. But there's going to be a change in the consent process on the children's side. And there will be one coming for the 50-55 as well. But that's not been finalized. So we, we didn't want to really get on it at this point and talk about it until we have more information. But I will have further follow-up on 50-55. But for today... We're, we're going to be touching on the 5201. Um, so it, it, this isn't a draft of form still, I believe, that the form will actually be coming out to be finalized shortly. Uh, but the form will go live on April 1st for any new enrollment um, you know, going forward. Um, and this 5201 will have to be used for that for any new enrollment on the children's side. Um, and anybody who's currently enrolled on the children's side, they'll have six months as of that 401 date to have those consents updated. And it's gonna take place of the, um, the 5200 and the 5230 for consents. Uh, and those other two will be phased out as new enrollments come forward and moving forward. Um, the 5201 is also gonna include consent for psyches. Uh, you won't have to re be required to collect a separate psyches consent. And there'll be an FAQ with updated information on these changes coming out as well. Um, Jessica will be definitely on that. She happens to be on vacation this week, but I, I told her we'd definitely get this out for folks just so you have a heads up that this is coming. Um, you know, this April 1st date's coming quick. Um, we're trying to get that information to you as we have it. Um, and again, this webinar, it's actually tomorrow. So if folks haven't registered on the children's side, um, please, uh, you know, we'll send this deck out after um, the today's meeting. And, we, you know, if you could just go to this link and, and register to be part of that um, and, and get any more up, updated information around this change. <clears throat> Is there any questions around the 5201 consent? Um, it's just it's one of those things that hurry up, wait, hurry up, wait, hurry up, wait, and then hurry up, it's coming. Okay, well, we'll be sure to get information as we become more aware. And again, Jessica will definitely be following up with folks when she gets back uh, early next week, just to, on anything significant around it. And then this itself is just a draft of that consent form. So I just put that in for folks to have this as a reference. <clears throat> and again, we can forward that, that finalized draft once it does come through. But this will be what this will be looking like as, as uh, you're going to be uh, putting those forms to use. Um, next, next smart categories. We're going to be at the end of um, business today going live in our production account. We talked about this last month about the categories in the attachments tab and documents. We, we created uh, a bunch of categories for various forms just to help streamline and better identify, you know, what forms are being loaded in. Um, so that's ready to go. I just wanted folks to know what's happening at the end of the day today. Um, so we encourage folks to go in, you know, try and select the appropriate form when you are updating the attachment. We're hoping it's going to help streamline things for folks. Um, we'll send it, the, the uh, desk guide out as well, um, just so folks can have that as a reference moving forward. And uh, just didn't know if there's any questions around it. We just had to work out a couple bugs. That's why it took a few weeks from our last discussion on it. Um, but it's ready to roll. Travis, it's Taylor. I will just um, input that we will be using the categories um, tab to um, do some auditing moving forward. So just be mindful of your selection of your category and make sure you're uh, cross-referencing cross with the desk guide to make sure you're choosing the appropriate category. Um, and then along with the new consents, um, once that new 5055 gets rolled out, folks will have um, one year from that release date to get a new 5055 in the chart. So we will be using this categories tab to audit that as well. Thank you, Taylor. 
So let us know if you have anything around this. I know it's a, it's a little change, but we're hoping it's a good one for folks. Um, you know, help provide some consistency when people are in the charts as well, trying to find things, you know, they're going to be labeled a little bit better. Um, and, and, you know, for audience purposes, obviously, it's going to be helpful as well. The next thing we want to touch on was that self-service report. Um, so that's still on par for quarter two. I did want to mention to the group, um, NetSmart did inform us that they're going to have the old, or so the existing self-service reporting system intact and the new one going uh, for a whole quarter before they pull the old port report um, platform out. So you're going to have a full quarter of two of those uh, different platforms running. Um, so I'm hoping that gives people a little breathing room. Yep, I see a yay, Renee. <laughs> yeah, we thought people would be happy about that. So that was a nice development um, because I know there was a lot of concern because folks do utilize that self-serving report. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to work with NetSmart. We actually meet with them tomorrow, just talk further through this and other things. Um, so we're hoping to get a better timeline, you know, sometime during quarter two, that's well and good, but I'd rather hear like toward the end of quarter two or, you know, in the middle of the quarter, instead of have it just spring up on us in a week or so. Um, so we're hoping to get a little, a little better definitive answer on what, what do they mean by during sometime during, um, Folks who, who do have reports that you'd like to see move into that new platform, you know, I just want to remind, just reach out to Taylor. Um, she can, you know, have the title of that report in the email to her, and she can include that um, request to NetSmart. And then the custom forms, uh, NetSmart's still working through the bugs on that. I know we've talked about this. As I think this is going to be the third month now. Um, it's it's in test environment. Um, there's been an issue with some of the fields not dropping down fully, et cetera. So we're working with NetSmart. They're working with their engineering team on that. But we're being promised that it's going to be much more user-friendly. Um, it's going to be easier to maneuver through. It's going to have a better look. And we're not going to get errors like we have with the comprehensive assessment. So those are the, the promises we have. We're not going to unwood with that. Um, you know, again, validation errors. There's there's going to be a, a quick way to report them um, through this process as well. And then also the validity of um, not being able to move forward if you uh, don't fill out the required fields. So um, just just making sure that folks you know have that accessibility to use this reporting mechanism and it's it's better it's not crashing out um, so we don't want to have it get out prematurely you know before those bugs are worked out so those are the net smart updates um, and other than that i just wanted to give another quick update we still have um, three organizations you can see on the right hand side on the bottom st joseph rehab uh, rehabilitation center weight house and people usa are all um, in the hopper, if you will, to, to work towards becoming downstream providers in our network. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, so they're, they're just going through the rungs of all the steps to become a provider. Um, so, so we're hoping, uh, you know, in the next couple of months, we start to see uh, these organizations start to join our group and, and uh, be part of our team. So we're excited about that. I don't know if anybody had any other questions. Um, that's all we had today as far as updates or anything to talk through. Um, as always, if you need anything, please reach out. Uh, health home email is usually the easiest way for folks. I know some folks reach out independently to others, um, but I, I want to make sure that folks have the ability to get responded back to fairly quickly. Um, so we do have that health home email monitored um, each business day throughout the day each day. Uh, so, you know, that that would be the best path um, in, in general sense to, you know, get a response back faster than, uh, than, than waiting a little bit longer possibly. Again, a big thank you. Uh, congratulations everyone again on, on doing such great work and, you know, it's clearly showing through the, that redesignation audit We'll have things we'll have to work on. I mean, that's that's part of it. Um, but as we get more information, we'll, we'll bring that back through and, and we'll talk through it and um, 
keep on moving on. If there wasn't anything else, uh, I wanted to thank everybody for their time today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, take care. Take care, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you.